It's runtime, so here's everything that happened in Indian tech over the weekend and some stuff from Friday evening that didn't make it into Friday's roundup video here at runtime. So first of all, AI Fiesta just got a pretty huge update that changed some fundamentals of this somewhat controversial platform. Dhruv Rati has shared a one week update on how things are going at his startup and there were seven updates overall. One, you can rename chats. Two, you can search chats, basically command F. Three, you can upload files now like PDF PDFs, docs, CSVs, and text files. Four, they've added 10 more AI models. This is pretty huge. Five, they've increased the token limit to 3 million tokens. Six, you can switch between light and dark mode for the UI. Not a major update, but then seven, they are also planning to add web search in the next couple of days. Now, obviously the two most meaningful updates here are new AI models and a huge increase in tokens. This is a 7.5X increase in value essentially used to pay 999 rupees for 400,000 tokens. Now you're getting 3 million tokens for the same amount of money and 10 new AI models as well. So initially AI Fiesta only offered six models, GPT-5, Grok-4, Perplexity Pro, Claude Sonnet 4, DeepSeek, and I'm not really sure which DeepSeek model was being offered here, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. But these new models, the new 10 models, are actually less token hungry. They're not state of the art. They're models like GPT-40 Mini, GPT-4.1 Nano, GPT-5, Nano and Mini. There's Gemini 2.5 Lite and Flash. You've now got a choice between DeepSeek Chat and DeepSeek Reasoner. You can use Claude 3 Haiku, not just Claude Sonnet 4, and Grok 3 Mini instead of just Grok 4. And what's interesting here is that now in the AI Fiesta UI, it actually defaults to these smaller, cheaper models. And my guess is that a lot of AI Fiesta users are not going to bother switching on these heavier, more expensive models for most tasks because they want to save their tokens. It's also worth Worth noting that on the pricing page for AI Fiesta, it's now written that you get 3 million tokens per month for 999 rupees, but premium models count as 4X. So if you're using GPT-40 Mini, you'll deplete tokens pretty slowly, but if you switch to GPT-5, you'll be burning through them much more quickly. All right, next up, a Haridwar Uttarakhand based CNC machine manufacturer, Ranok, is building something that has never been done in India before. So Vishak Ranotra, who's the co-founder and CEO of this startup, shared a video of this 12-axis CNC wire-forming machine that can bend and coil springs up to 2.5 millimeters in diameter. And the machine features eight adjustable slides for enhanced flexibility and a rotary wire pecking system, which is a first of its kind in India. They've already started manufacturing these machines, and the goal here is to set new standards in Indian precision spring production. So what does this actually mean? Well, currently, pretty much all of the precision CNC spring machines in India are imported from China, Taiwan, Japan, and Germany. And you may not realize this, but springs are everywhere. Vehicles, electronics, home appliances, they're used in agriculture, defense, aerospace, the medical industry. I mean, springs are a multi-billion dollar global market that most of us just don't even really think about on a day-to-day basis. And so Ranox CNC machines are just as good as international machines when it comes to accuracy and reliability and overall performance, but they're more affordable because they don't need to be imported from another country. All right, next up, Reliance just had their 48th AGM and they're getting pretty serious about AI. Mukesh Ambani unveiled Reliance Intelligence. This is a new subsidiary company that they're hoping will eventually become the backbone of India's AI infrastructure. They're gonna be hiring researchers, engineers, and product designers to build AI at enterprise scale. And also, Reliance isn't doing this alone. They've partnered actually with Google and Meta for this big AI push. Now, with Google, they're gonna be building a dedicated AI cloud region in Jamnagar, Gujarat, and this new infrastructure will serve enterprises, developers, and institutions. And to power this AI infrastructure, Reliance will also be building the Dhirubhai Ambani Giga Energy Complex, which is going to be manufacturing solar panels and batteries and electrolyzers for green hydrogen production. And it's apparently going to be four times the size of Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada as well. So this is going to be a massive facility. And then looking at Reliance's partnership with Meta, they're going to be doing a $100 million JV. That's uh, 70, 30 ownership split, 70 Reliance and 30 Meta to deliver enterprise AI solutions built on Llama. And the idea here is that this is going to help Indian businesses to deploy generative AI models. 
Now, it's also worth noting that Reliance is in talks with OpenAI because Reliance already works pretty closely with Microsoft and Microsoft owns a huge chunk of OpenAI. And we might learn more about this potential partnership when Sam Altman visits India this month in September. Reliance is also gonna be launching AI smart glasses. These are obviously not the glasses, these are Meta Ray-Bans, but they're calling these Geo Frames. And it's interesting because I remember talking about something very similar in 2020 called Geo Glass. And the video for Geo Glass is actually still live on their YouTube channel. I don't think that they actually ever went into production, but it feels kind of like a similar story here where the Geo Frames website doesn't really have a lot of real information. There are no specs. You can't see, for example, what the image quality of the camera is going to be. It's just vague promises of stuff like live translation, video recording, live streaming, and music. And I don't doubt Reliance's ability to make these glasses, but I just wanted to highlight the story here uh, because this isn't the first time that Reliance has announced a smart glasses product. And it's unfortunate because the 2020 version of this was way ahead of its time. The closest thing that we had in the world at that time was Google Glass. And of course, even Google Glass was a concept which was just way too futuristic and weird looking. Whereas with Geo Glass, it actually looked remarkably similar to what Meta Ray-Bans ended up becoming. What, obviously with the camera in the center of the glasses instead of on the side, but still, it's unfortunate that Reliance uh, could have actually ended up becoming the technology and innovation leader in this category instead of following in Meta's footsteps because they were actually first here. But anyways, uh, I actually made an interesting prediction in 2020, and so I'll just play that out for you right now. GeoGlass wasn't announced with a date, so we don't know when it's gonna be launching. We also don't know how much it's gonna cost. You can't even pre-order them. So it could be that Geo is gonna be working on these glasses for a while, maybe taking some of the feedback that they've received thanks to the AGM, and perhaps making the form factor a little bit sleeker, maybe making the functionality a little bit smoother. That's my hope, because I think that this is a really cool concept, but it's just not quite there yet. All right, next up, Boat has teamed up with Bengaluru-based system on chip startup Hardwire to launch the Indus 1011 chip. This chip is specifically good at battery management, and so Boat is gonna be using it for charging cases, but Hardwire is a fabulous semiconductor firm, meaning that they don't manufacture semiconductors, they just design them. So I wanted to find out who is actually manufacturing the Indus 1011 chip. I mean, they're calling it Indus, right? They're calling it indigenous. So this article says it will be assembled and packaged in India by Tata Electronics. So if Hardwire is designing it and Tata Electronics is assembling it, then who is doing the semiconductor fabrication here for this Indus chip? Well, I wasn't able to get a conclusive answer, but it's probably Taiwan-based PSMC as Tata has partnered with them. They're actually in the process of setting up India's very first semiconductor fab in Gujarat and they also sent 200 plus people to Taiwan for training earlier this year. But at the moment, this fab is still under construction. And so the Indus 1011 is being made probably in Taiwan and then assembled in India. So it's kind of indigenous, but also kind of not, even though it's called Indus. Now, this is actually the first time that Boat has partnered with a fabulous Indian chip firm, and they're making decent progress actually as a company towards localizing manufacturing of their products. Back in 2023, Aman Gupta said that 70% of Boat's products were made in India. Currently, they're saying it's about 80% of their products that are being manufactured in India, and they've also said that they wanna bring that number up to between 90 and 95% in the future, although they're not really committing to a specific year. But anyways, that is all the Indian Indian tech news that I have for you all today from the weekend. Obviously, I'll be rounding up everything that happens on Monday today as you're watching this video. But until then, stay tuned and I will catch you in the next one.